muscle and ligaments of the glenohumeral joint. GM colleagues have found the specificity to be 99.2% and the sensitivity to be 19.2%. Patients may have posterior instability due to trauma with the arm in a flexed, horizontally adducted, and internally rotated position, or commonly with seizures, although the rate of posterior instability is really only about 1-4% to of glenohumeral instability. Indications for this test include mechanism of injury, which I described early, earlier, and also complaints of pain with pushing activities. So this could be pushing open the door, um, doing push-ups, things like that. If you know that the patient has subluxed their shoulder or they have a humeral fracture, fracture, this test would be contraindicated. To do the test, you want the patient lying supine on the table. You're going to flex the arm to 90 degrees with the elbow flexed at 90 degrees as well horizontally adduct the shoulder, internally rotate, and then the therapist is going to apply a posterior force in line with the humerus. A positive test would be pain or apprehension. And as with most special tests, you want to test the uninvolved side first. Next, Ariana is going to demonstrate how to do the test. So Emily, today we're going to test the stability in your glenohumeral joint, your shoulder joint. We are going to test the posterior stability, so Back here, we're going to test the ligaments and the labrum is what we call the tissue, some of the tissue inside of your shoulder. Okay. Um, I'm going to put your arm in this position, and I'm going to apply a force just down your humerus, this bone right here, um, and stabilize your scapula, like my hand is doing here, and just apply a little bit of pressure in posterior direction, so towards your back, okay. to see if you have any pain or any uncomfortable feelings with this test. So I just tested Emily's right side, her uninvolved side, and found that she does not have any pain or apprehension with this test. So now we're going to move on to her involved side, her left side. So the first thing you want to make sure you do is stabilize her scapula. So make sure you're on her scapula and not blocking the humerus from moving in that posterior direction. So really make sure your hand is on the scapula. Also make sure the table isn't blocking the humeral head from moving in that posterior direction as well. So again, stabilize the scapula, have your patient relax, make sure they're at a good position, <clears throat> and you're gonna put them into that position we talked about earlier with the flexion, horizontal adduction, internal rotation. And apply that posterior directed force through the humerus. Any pain or symptoms with that, Emily? Yeah, that reproduced my symptoms. So that test reproduced Emily's symptoms, so we would call that a positive posterior apprehension test on her left side. So that was our demonstration of the posterior apprehension test. If you have any questions, please contact Dr. Mark Sleeper. Thank you for watching, and I hope this helps you determine if a patient has posterior instability.